when there's a problem with your program and you try to use it, instead of getting this pretty triangle as we have here, can I say pretty without having to turn in my man card? I certainly hope so. But when you mess this program up and, and you try to compile it, this compile will fail, or this one, either one, depends on where the error is. But a compile will fail, and furthermore, you will not be able to link those shaders into a single program. Thus, when you say OpenGL use this program, uh, OpenGL will just ignore you and say, oh, that program's not legit, it's in a bad state. Let me show you. I'm going to highlight this, Control x put it right here, because I'm really good at swapping these two keywords, location and layout. I can never remember which one goes out here, which one goes in here. Anyway, let's run this, and you'll see our triangle is again white. OpenGL assumed the first attribute was position, but besides that, it's not going to do anything. And use program was essentially useless here. So what we'd like is some way, some error message maybe. It's nice when we build our programs, and the error messages at least give us an idea where to look for and fix the error. We, we need that. Okay, and when we say compile shader, there are error messages, we just need to know how to get them out of our shader objects. So right here, after I try to compile both shaders, I'm going to first check to see if the compile worked. And if it didn't work, then I want to see what the error message is. So gl get shader iv. Right? You can kind of think of this method or function here as me getting a value on our shader object. I showed in the previous video how we are kind of setting values on shader objects, and now I'm calling a getter method on the shader object. We have to pass in the ID of the shader that we're trying to get that information from. GL enum, this is the enum name, <laughs> GL enum name. This is the name of the property that we're trying to get off of our vertex shader, and there's various things we can pass in here if you look at the documentation. For get shader IV, then you'll see. The one I want is GL compile uh, status. All right? And then the way this function returns to us is via an out parameter, so we have to pass it a pointer to a GL int. So GL int, which is type deft, I believe, on my platform to just be an int, but we'll go with the platform independent version, even though we didn't do that here. I probably should have said GL char right there instead. GL int uh, compile status. And then right here we'll pass a, the address of compile status down to OpenGL so GL can write the compile status flag out to this value. Now you may be thinking, what in tarnation is this IV? Well, OpenGL existed before, I think long before C++, I think, right? But a lot of OpenGL was, interfacing has been written in C. And it turns out the C programming language does not have function overloading, right? I can't write a function with the exact name as another function and only differentiate the two functions by the type of the arguments coming in. So the way OpenGL got around that is by essentially throwing some type information right here just for our overloads. So integer vector. I'm essentially saying, hey, get me something on the shader. If you read this, it's get shader. I wish I called it get shader property or something like that, but get shader info maybe. Integer vector. And what that means is this last argument, I'm passing an integer, and it could be a vector of integers. I'm only passing a single integer here, but it could be a vector of integers. And I, I don't mean like vector twos and vector threes that we're using with like over here. I mean, the idea is similar, but I could I could make compile status. Maybe there's several statuses, so I could make a vector. And you're thinking, Jamie, this is not a vector. That's an array. Well, to OpenGL, this is a vector. When you hear vector with OpenGL, in this case, uh, it's an array. It's just a list. It's a sequence of GL ints. And, and in that case, I just pass compile status because I made this an array and compile status. The name compile status is, is the address of the first or the zeroth element in the array. Anyway, that's, that's OpenGL's funky way of doing uh, function overloading. I'm going to stick with one status. I'm going to pass the address here because I know there's only one status. And then right here, I'm going to say if compile status is not equal to GL true, 
True meaning everything's good, we're good to go. If it's not true, something's bad, something's really bad. GL, true is yet another pound to find, they call them enums, but enums, pound to finds, whatever. GL, true is a one, but we don't really care about the one part, we just care about the GL, true part. If it's not true, then we need to get the error message out of OpenGL. And in order to get the error message out of OpenGL, we need to have a character array, an array of characters that OpenGL can write that error message to. So here we go. GL, get, shader, IV, same thing. I'm calling the exact same function, open parenthesis. The, which, which object are you talking about? I'm talking about the vertex shader right here. The name I want is GL, info, log, length. I need to know the length of the info log, which has the error message in it. The info log is just part of my shader object that OpenGL is maintaining for me. And then GL int param, I could reuse compile status, but instead I'm, I want to make a variable name that a little bit more intuitive. Than, I don't want to reuse compile status. Let's say this is info log length, because that's exactly what it is. And we'll pass address of info log length. Right there. So again, I'm using GL shader, GL get shader IV. I'm using it twice. In this case, I'm saying, hey, give me the property value of the compile status. Did the compile work? And then here I'm saying, well, the compile didn't work. So uh, tell me how long that info log is so I know how big to make my array. So now that we have that length, I'm going to say GL char star buffer gets new GL char. When I say GL char, we know that's the same as saying char on my platform, but I'll stick with the quote-unquote platform independence here with the with the type def. And we need to allocate that, the length of info log length. And just because I'm notorious for leaking my memory, I'm going to delete my buffer right here. I'm going to immediately delete my buffer. So now that we have the buffer, it is of the right length. We need to we need open GL to fill that buffer up. So GL get shader info log i don't know why they didn't reuse get shader gl get shader and then did like a a c for character vector but instead they call it gl get shader info log whatever i need the info log on vertex shader id and the size how big is the size well it's the size of info log length Right, maybe I didn't make my buffer. I didn't. I, I I don't necessarily have to query this info log. I could guess and say, well, let's just look at the first hundred characters. And so I'd say, well, our buffer is only a hundred characters big. Don't write any more out than a hundred characters. Now this is. <laughs> I can see why people get confused here. This is an output parameter. This length. All right. If Say, say we guessed and said the info log is a thousand characters, and it turns out that it's not a thousand characters, the actual error message took up 83 characters. Well, OpenGL will tell us that it was actually 83 characters right here. OpenGL will write out the actual length of the buffer right here. Well, we know what the length is. I asked what the length is, so I know that this value is going to equal that value, but whatever, I have to pass something in here. And, and even what's what's cooler is instead of passing a GL int, it's a GL size i. Well, what, what's a GL size i? GL size i buffer size. Sure, whatever. I'm, I'm, now I have two variables that kind of mean the same thing, and it's forcing me to do this buffer size here. I'm going to address a buffer size there, but let me click on this and hit F12 so we can go look at the type def for it. And oh, look, a size i is just an int. Right, it's the same thing as a GL int. So frustrating, but whatever. They wanted this size I thing, so I'll stick with it. Here's 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 the good part. Buffer. We'll pass in buffer here. So when I say hey GL shader GL get shader info log, it will write the error message out to buffer. Right, and then at this point, you can choose your favorite outputting routine. I'm I'm okay with the con with the uh, latest and greatest streams, but if you want to use printf or anything, you can. C out buffer and line and in order to do a C out I need to pound include include IO stream and then I'm going to do something really bad but using namespace I don't know why I was typing system namespace STD use the standard name this exposes everything in STD to my entire file uh, I don't really like doing that but again this is a scratch pad it's a graphics pad I don't care if this was 
if this was a like my game engine project, I, you'll never see me. Well, hopefully you'll never see me do that in there. All right, we have an error here in our shader. We know how to get that error information out and dump it out. And uh, yeah, let's run this, see what we get. Build failed, of course, build failed. What's, I cannot convert from const. Oh, it's const, whatever, const. I made that error in the previous video, didn't I? I believe I did. Okay, there we go. Still get the white triangle, but then right here we say, hey, syntax error, unexpected, parenthesis, expecting curly braces, that token, parenthesis. So that error message doesn't really tell us what's going on, but at least gives us an idea where the error, er, er, the error occurred. And the error message has some info to pinpoint exactly where it was having this problem. Notice we don't get like a token number. It just says, hey, this token parenthesis. Well, it could be this parenthesis or it could be this parenthesis. This right here gives you a line number, and it's one-based. So if you think about it, this is line number one, line number two, line number three, line number four. So why is it pinpointing the error message or the error being caused at line two? Line two is blank. What's the problem? Well, again, this vertex shader code... We've pretty much written all of this code on one line. We don't have any carriage return line feeds except right here. So this is line one right here, and then line two starts right here, and it goes all the way to the end because there's no carriage return line feeds. Soon I'll, I'll show you how to quit writing shader code in strings like this. This is horrible. Let's write it in a file, load up the file, and, and get some real line numbers. But just to prove to you that that is the line number, Right here we have line number two. All right, let's close that, close that. Backslash R, backslash N, or actually at this point you can just do a backslash N. Backslash N by itself, oh, line number three, we're getting closer. Backslash N, uh, line, or actually that's not, that's not the right spot to put a backslash N, we need to put it at the end of the line. Backslash N, and I'm actually going to expedite this. Let's just put a backslash N inside of all of our code and make it really ugly. Run it, and now you can see, oh, the error is happening at line four. Okay, so this is line number one, two, three, four, and yes, that's exactly where I put the error in. So very good. All right, that's, that's how we get the error, the compile error, compile time error information for a shader. This is obviously just the vertex shader we're getting the error information for. Let's do the fragment shader. I can copy this, paste it. And then change this to fragment shader ID, but that's so horrid, isn't it? Isn't that terrible? Ah, let's not do that. Let's, uh, instead of copy and paste, let's refactor out to a, a function. So I'm going to make a function. Void check. Actually, let's return to bool. Bool. Check shader status. And parentheses. Paste all this in. And then the vertex shader ID, it's a glu int. So I'm going to put this here and say shader ID, and then copy this, and then everywhere I see vertex uh, shader ID, I need to paste that in, hopefully I got all of them, and then right here, let's return false, meaning no go, not good for launch, there's a compile error, and then right here, we shall return true, indicating, yep, everything's good to go, and then down here, after we compile our shaders, I'm going to say if... Uh, not check shader status, uh, vertex shader ID, or not check shader status. If neither one of them is good to go, fragment shader ID, then forget it. All right, we can't link. We may as well give up at that point. Get out of here. So let's uh, let's let's make sure this still builds, runs, executes. Uh, okay, good. We do still have the error, so we bailed out early. We didn't even get down to the use program. Uh, I'm actually going to control Z out all these backslash ends I threw in here. Because very quickly, probably in the near future, I'll show you how to throw this in a file and read it. Control F5, and we're back to our pretty triangle. So that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. That is how we check whether a shader compiled or not. And in the next video, I think I'll show you how to check whether the program links or not. It's, it's pretty much the exact same thing, except uh, we need to check link status instead of compile status.